Hello once again and welcome back to the Sounds and Symbols mini video series The Road to Literacy. This is session 12 and we're going to start looking at phonological awareness. There are three levels of phonological awareness and the first of these is being able to tell where the syllables are in words. This mini series of 20 videos offers activity ideas to help to promote the foundational skills required for literacy success. You will find this introduction at the beginning of each session to remind you of the skills you are helping your child to gain and to explain how these contribute to literacy success. Sounds and Symbols is committed to play-based learning, the belief that the spoken word should come before the written word, Vygotsky's socio-cultural theory of cognitive development, that language is the root of culture, that a child's culture is significant to their learning, and that children learn within their community role. That building knowledge upon previous knowledge is how children learn, through holism, bringing together everything that they know, and that children learn through doing. This diagram shows indicators of good literacy. Children learn through experience. This is gained from their environment and their interactions within it. The skills on this diagram are evident in children who are good at literacy. By promoting these skills, it is possible to establish a sound foundation for literacy. Each indicator has been identified through educational research. Children who struggle with literacy are often weak in some of these areas. For a more in-depth explanation of these indicators, please refer to the Literacy Unlocked webinars at www.melsis.co.uk slash eduweb. Teaching children through music is a very natural, fun and enjoyable and successful way to learn. And this is especially true of literacy because language and music have a great deal in common. Facility with language and the ability to discriminate and to manipulate language sounds are the most important precursors to literacy success. Musical activities offer a means of playing with language sounds. By focusing on developing an awareness of language sounds, a secure literacy foundation can be laid. Listening to stories, singing songs, reciting rhymes and enjoying finger plays and action songs are the bedrock of early literacy learning as they help children to tune in to language sounds. They also help to create a fun and playful environment in which children can learn to identify, match and manipulate language sounds. These skills are essential for literacy. In the last session, we mentioned phonological awareness and how important this is to literacy. It's the ability to hear the sounds within words. And there are three levels, syllable, rhyme and phoneme. Being able to chunk words into syllables helps children with spelling. For example, croc o dial becomes three easier to spell chunks than the whole word crocodile. Um, also remember that you are teaching this for the purpose of helping children to be able to spell. So sometimes we might just say the word as it's spelt instead of how it sounds. So for example, a word like chocolate, I would, and this, of course, there are still two syllables, chocolate, two syllables, chocolate. However, if you're teaching children for the purpose of spelling, I would sound it out chocolate, play with it for fun. So there are three parts to that word because there is a, an O in the middle that we don't actually say when we're pronouncing it. Um, friend is the same. I always say to myself in my head, fry end. And even as an adult, I had a problem with the word occasion. I couldn't remember whether it had two C's or two S's. And eventually I told myself, come on, oc occasion. So now I know that it has two C's and one S. It's a way to help you with spelling. 
Um, if a word has a double consonant, for example, like butter, I would help children to say but ter. So there are two sounds in butter, for example, butter. But if you divide the t sounds and put one either side, but ter, it helps children to remember that there is a double letter in there. So say it twice to yourself when you syllabify. But to fly three syllables. Okay, let's have a look at what we can do to help. So one thing that I used to do with the children is when they sat in a circle, I'm smiling because they, I, I thought it was quite a dull thing to do, but actually they loved it. So just go around the circle, ask them to tell me, it could be what they've had for breakfast, or the most popular was, what is your favourite superhero? And as they said the word, it could be animals, could be anything, as they said the word, they had to tap the syllables. So for example, this is my favourite, Batman. I had to do that. Um, so you could do, I'll put this on full screen, I think, so you can see what I'm going to show you. Okay, you could do this with all sorts of things. Most animals tend to be usually two syllables, but we do have owl, mouse, sheep, oh, and horse, there are only one. We've got lion, tortoise or turtle, zebra, oops, can't see his face there, camel, oh, what about Nessie, monster. <laughs> and for three syllables, I've only got this one, elephant. But of course, you, you can, realia is much better if you can find real things, then that's the best thing to use. Um, in my alphabet book and more, every page has got a picture of something with an initial sound and it also has the syllables written there's a dot underneath each one hat one syllable hand horse just one syllable can we see anything with more there we go How about oh lump one syllable lad -da. two syllables sorry yes two syllables lie on two syllables I'm looking for something with three what about v Have. There we go. Violin. Van. Volcano. Okay, so um, something like this would be really useful, and especially as it's got them the, the syllables marked out as well. You can find this on Amazon, Alphabet Book and More by Maria K. Uh, or you can use, we have got, I've got a uh, Fruit, plastic fruit. You could use real fruit. Lemon. Apple. Again, double consonant. Banana. Sweet corn. You get the idea. Aubergine somewhere. Aubergine. Or do you have a different name for it? Um, also, you could just print out pictures. There's a picture of a number seven, ice cream, egg, um, or do it when you're doing your instruments, drum, triangle, octa chime, whatever it is that you've got. Um, and then I'm going to show you a little sort um, game that you could do to put it out on a table. So you can have uh, little boxes or little trays for words with two syllables, three syllables, four syllables. Or if it's helpful, make a picture of something with four syllables or three syllables instead of the numbers or two syllables, lion. And then have little cards, a set of cards here. 
So you find the card, dinosaur. Oh, where does that go? Number three. Tomato, number three. Carrot, number two. Motor bike, number three. You get the idea. Banana. Watermelon. I think these are quite straightforward, but the children would have to know this vocabulary. Spider. Make sure you do the vocabulary first. Apple. What about this one? Could be flower, this one, or flower pot. Ellie. Oh, it's the other way up, I think. I need to stand on the legs. Television for look where the arrow is pointing. Pocket. I'll put my favourite one in. Batman. <laughs> um, so that's something that you can put out on a table and children can do between them in a little group. That's a nice little activity. I'm going to recommend, of course, clapping and moving along. Uh, moving around to the rhythm of songs or the rhythm in rhymes. The rhythm in music when people are singing is the same as the syllables in words. So for example, if you were to sing ba ba black sheep have you any wool? Then that is helping children to identify where the syllables are. So you could clap that as well. Ba, ba, black sheep, have you any wool, etc. Okay, so the rhythm in music is the same as the syllables in words when you sing a song. You can see how music is so helpful there. Um, same in twinkle, twinkle. You can clap out the rhythm to that. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Now, sometimes there are too many syllables in the words. We can't clap them all out. So, for example, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. We'd be going, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. That's a bit too much. So we tend to go, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. That is the beat. So the beat and the rhythm are different. The same with Humpty Dumpty. We tend to go Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Okay, so there is a difference between clapping the beat and clapping the rhythm. So make sure that when you're asking your children to do one or the other, you all know which one it is that you're doing. The rhythm helps with syllables, so that's a bit better, but not if it's um, very fast and you can't fit them in quick enough. So when, another thing you can do is when you're speaking with children, just talking about anything, you can emphasise syllables, if, especially if a child is not pronouncing a word correctly. So help them, like elephant. It helps with the spelling later on. Alligator. Think about accent as well. I was once working with some children, they were doing really well with the uh, syllables and uh, I wanted to show their teacher how well they were doing. And then we got to croc-o-dial and I said it very carefully, croc-o-dial, three syllables. No, they insisted they were four. This is because they pronounced the word croc Oh, dial. So they were actually counting the, these sounds in their heads, which was impressive. I was impressed with that, even though it wasn't quite right, because dial is D I A L as opposed to dial, like smile, which is uh, only one syllable. Um, so think about children's pronunciation as well, it makes a difference. So, again, observe the children that you're working with. Can they syllabify words that you suggest? Can they suggest their own words and have fun syllabifying those?
Um, in one, one setting I was at, I asked the children, could you give me the name of a, an animal? And clap the syllables. One little boy had Tyrannosaurus Rex. Oh, I was very impressed. I was very impressed with that. I think he was four years old. So very impressive. Um, can each child count the syllables in words? Remember, it's important for later spelling. It might not be something you need immediately for reading and looking at letters, but if children do it now when they're young, then they'll be they'll they'll think of these sounds in their heads and be able to sound out words. It'd be much easier for them to spell them later on. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Please join me again for number 13. It's on phonological awareness again, and this time we're looking at rhyme.